I think of a combine at harvest, I think about more than the head just bringing in corn. I think about what happens here at harvest is already setting the stage for the spring of 18. And we see a lot of residue here underneath this head. When I look at residue, I see dollars. And we know that there's about $100 an acre in value in a corn on corn residue. So there's a tremendous amount in a 200 bushel corn crop. There's over 90 pounds of N. And the P and the K and potash alone, there's 220 pounds in a 200 bushel corn residue. So that $100 is something you and I want to capture as quickly as we can. Now we know that it takes nature five years to digest a total corn plant. And I went to my R&D team and I said, guys, I don't like writing high input checks. Can we figure out a way to make this corn plant give back all of its value in half the time or two and a half years? And so we set out saying, let's use the corn head to help us process this residue into easy money. And it started understanding how microbials work in residue. When you and I think of a corn plant, we realize that Mike and his team cannot get through the rind of this stalk. They can only come in on the ends. So we're saying five years, if we're gonna speed that up, we gotta make a lot more entry points and action sites for Mike and his team to get in to these stalks. So when we thought of a stalk roll, we said, what if we could take and design it so that every inch and a half, it would open that stalk, but not take it into confetti. There's a real cost to confetti. And confetti is hard for planters to run into in the following spring without losing some plant count. And plants and ears matter. And so we wanted to leave pieces in a seven inch piece, but yet every inch and a half chain it. So 360 chain roll with the teeth that you see here, the opposing teeth is all about chaining residue and then coming around and you can see the knives on these different machines and they come around in these different stock rolls and it's gonna cut it every seven inches. So Mike and his team are gonna get a really fast start in it. For us, as soon as the combines leave a field, we're right in behind putting ammonia sulfate on. The nitrogen in that is jet fuel for Mike and his team. If you and I have the right temperature, the right moisture, and a food source such as the corn stalk, we can quickly start to digest and break that residue down to reach our two-year goal instead of a five-year goal. Take a look at my right and left hand here. In my right hand is residue that came from a no-till bean field in Iowa in July from last year's harvest. This is the John Deere stalk rolls, and you can see there's a lot of size to this residue. It's on the five-year plan. In my left hand here, you can see where we had chain roll came in, and we create the action sites. In other words, you can see right here, then again here, but we left it in a seven-inch piece so the row cleaners can bring it out of the way of the disc openers, so we were not gonna get any seedling blights, but we quickly and very rapidly broke this down. Take a look in the picture of these three tubs. The first tub is a chain roll 360, and you can see a matter of eight months how fast that residue went down compared to the second tub, which is John Deere intermeshing roll. Stalks are much larger. The tub, you can tell by the size and diameter of that residue, it's more gonna be five years. The third tub is the opposing stalk roll from deer. And that's where the edges of the knife just come and touch each other. And all it's doing is just crimping and pushing on that stalk a bit. So the action sites are few and far between, and it's really hard for Mike and his team to digest this residue. This corn was killed early. It was sprayed in July, sold it, so that we could bring it down in time that we could harvest here for the video. And it doesn't get any tougher than this. It's green stalks. And so you'll see a difference at times on different moisture in stalks and how it chains. But in this case, you can still see that the inch and a half from here to here, it opened it up. This plant has actually been open and split. So Mike and his team should have no problem getting into the heart of the meat of this stalk. So if Mike and his team need a lot of action sites and entry points, 
why not just use a confetti roll? There's rolls on the marketplace, they're just like a corn chopper, make extremely fine short pieces. Well, the row cleaners on your planter are not gonna like that next spring. So let's go in and look where we've planted on top of those rolls, and let's take a look at some ear count loss. Last fall, we had come in and used three different types of corn heads with different stalk rolls. Where I'm standing here, we had on a confetti stalk roll, Right beside me, we had a John Deere intermeshing stock roll. Then further to the south, we had the 360 chain roll. We realized that each stock or each plant that we raise here is worth seven bushel per thousandth of an acre to us. So as we've been in here, you can see the flags in the background, we've been in here doing the counts. In a hundred foot of segment of row, we're seeing more, four and a half more plants to chain roll than we do the confetti roll. So I'm gonna dig here for you and we're gonna show you when the small pieces of stalks from last fall's corn harvest are in the row with the seed and create seedling blight and we spin those plants out underground. So we'll come in here and we'll just do a little discovery work and we'll say what's taking place here. In this case, you can see we have a lot of residue. And so this is an environment that's gonna be really tough for this corn plant to handle. And we see this kind of residue, lots and lots of, it's just basically wads and wads of small residue. Almost look like the silage chopper come through here. And this is exactly what the confetti heads do. They leave this kind of a residue where the row cleaner was struggling to take it out. In this case, you can see here, this seed is trapped and he's trapped right on. And you can already see the mold and the fungi that's on the bacteria that's growing on these pieces of residue that's in here. And this seed just couldn't handle that kind of a growing environment. You can see the roots are entwined right in the residue. So in this case, you can see where my knife is here. You can pick it up. And this guy just couldn't make the surface. Once again, we only have to have about one of these per thousandth of an acre and we have a seven bushel loss. You'll see two different colors of flags, white where there's no plant emerged at all. In other words, that seed, due to the fact of being next to con confetti or the fact of cold germ, didn't come up. The yellow is a late emerger, and he's at least two colors behind and won't have an ear at all. So as I walk towards you, and this 100 feet, we have 16 mistakes, which translates compared to the 360 chain roll, about 1.7 less plants per thousandth of an acre. So if it's seven bushel per every plant, we're looking at almost 12 to 14 bushel difference at this stage of the game. We're just 30 rows south of where we were at the confetti rolls. And we see quite a difference here where the 360 chain roll ran last fall. In this case, in the 100 foot block, we only have four flags versus 16. And you can see that the residue that I've picked up here where there is about that six to seven inches. It's been pierced and opened up and chained. And so we have tremendous breakdown, but at the same time, the number of mistakes is dramatically less. You can see here the effects, like we talked in the spring, when we make really small pieces, we create an environment where plants struggle to come up. And you see that right here by the white flag that we put in here back in May. We showed you this flag where the plant never emerged. In other words, he was diseased and he flat out didn't get out of the ground. Plant next to us is a normal plant. And then we have the effect of where the planter itself with its row cleaners, and this planter had clean sweep on it, couldn't eliminate the fines and this plant was diseased. It had a ceiling blight. It was slow to come up, and you can see the effect here. We've talked about it all summer, about these late emergers and the cost. So we'll go ahead and pull this ear off. We'll take a look at him here, and you can see the size of this one. He's gonna struggle. So whenever there's a discoloration like you see here from yellow to white, we have to remove that, that's not gonna make it. So now we have an ear here that's about 12 or 14 around and approximately 14 long due to being a late emerger. We come out of the field 
and we brought a hundred feet of row out with us and we've set them on these boards to show you exactly what we're looking at. So behind me, you can see the pile of the deer intermeshing. Right here in front of us on the top board, we got the 360 chain roll and the board closest to me, we have the chopping roll. And the chopping roll has 126 and the chain roll has 134. So we have an eight ear difference. And when the combine comes here and we look up at the yield monitor, these are the guys that start to add up. And when we see a yield monitor start to drop and you start to have a 15 to 17 bushel drop when you pull into certain of these areas. And this came from the fact these plants were just laid out the gate. So the chain roll is designed for easy installation. And once it's on, it's built to handle a lot of acres. You know, in the last two years, we still haven't reached the end of how many acres can a chain roll run. The most I've seen on them is 480 acres per row, and they still had a lot of life left. They become razor sharp, and they'll pierce that stalk, and they'll grab it and chain it, and then remember, there's two sets of knives coming around, so every seven inches, we're gonna create a piece. I guess what I see as I go out in the countryside and check heads, is I see a tendency to run stalk rolls too long. Whether opposed or intermeshing, they're flat wore out. I'm not a big fan of opposed because as they come together and as they start to wear, you start to lose the ability to grab that stalk and get it through the head and get that ear off and get it done. And when you walk in the field behind those heads, stalks are full length and it's gonna take a long time to digest that, not even considering it's a real challenge if you're doing some type of tillage or even a no-till next spring. So take a look at these stalk rolls, keep them in the hunt, keep them fresh, and you're gonna have a lot better harvesting coming through the machine.